Hi to me, fans. So in this third part, I want to show you the solutions I found to actually mount the Arduino inside the King Cap. For me, that front space here always was tempting. It's, it's empty, so I thought I can use it for that. Um, but of course, there's always the concern of dirt. And I found several solutions to get around this. First, the Arduino is inside here in a small uh, chassis. And I made a handle where you can actually pull out, lift that up and pull out the whole unit. The connectors are located in the front. And there's also space to to plug in the USB directly to the Arduino to update the actual firmware of the system. And all cables are prepared here to be connected to the Arduino through that front panel. Inside, there's just a slide uh, using magnets to hold this whole chassis in place. The only thing that's open is that exit for the main steering, but Everywhere around, this uh, section is sealed up. Having the Arduino on this prototyping board is my second attempt. My first attempt was this kind of a small box, but I was never happy. It always felt like a kind of a intermediate solution. The Arduino here is just hold in place by being pressed against and all the wires go directly into the Arduino and it uses up a lot of space. Whereas this solution, it offers more space from the get-go and it also helps to have more empty space to add other components. So one thing you already see the first uh, version did not have is that beeper, which has a very important function. And there are already new components here. It's a voltage regulator, and this is voltage measurement device. To give you a better idea of how that is all connected together, I made some simple graphics. All devices share a common ground, but I just leave that off in this illustration just to simplify the schematics. The Arduino can run on 7 to 12 volts, I think, is the optimum named in the specs. So there's plenty of voltage from the main battery, but all accessories need 5 volts. While the Arduino itself actually has a, a built-in voltage regulator, it cannot power a lot of devices. So I'm very limited to what I can do with the Arduino voltage regulation itself. So I decided I want to upgrade this to an external voltage regulator that generates 5 volt for anything I might want to add in the future. <coughs> Cheap, yes, <coughs> Wi-Fi, <coughs> sorry. So the Arduino gets its power from the main battery. All other components are fed from the 5 volt power regulator. And the lines continue on to be measured by the voltage divider. From the software side, I said I need more than just some speed gauges. So now the driver can choose to see a graph display of his power and voltage on the car. And if he chooses so, after coming back from his race, he can also switch to a history view, having his last ride animated across the small screen. All this is triggered by the remote control. And I have some problems right now with uh, erratic switches of modes and I really have to find out what's causing this. It could be some cabling, some, some cold solder joints. It's really hard to pinpoint at the moment. I already tried to code in some fail-safe stuff, so, so a loss of signal does not directly impact the system. But right now I have not found a solution for this. To mount this, I just slide it back into its bay just locks in place via the magnets and then I can connect the data lines. So just for the purpose of this video, I can connect here my screen from the test rig. So it's now basically back into action. With this configuration, there's enough space to plug in the USB inside this small hole and update the firmware. Closing up the car does not need 
any tools. Just slide in the plates. They magnetize to their position. Everything is closed. And I made one additional piece because whenever I looked at the car from this low angles, cool shots, you see there's nothing in this uh, car. So I built this special piece. The main purpose of this is just being placed here while filming and it's blocking the view from both sides. So I can film the car without having a see-through effect. And the second thing is it actually protects the back side from some debris and dirt. Uh, safety first, I plastered my car with all kinds of silly uh, safety signs. They are actually just uh, printed high gloss DVDs. Uh, I used an old DVD printer that's more or less lying around unused for years. They look fairly similar to metal high glossy plates and they're even waterproof. So I'm quite happy with this. Another addition is this roof mount for the GoPro version 2.0. Of course, it's all in place by magnets. Hopefully it is a bit more stable than version 1, which failed miserably. So that's it for now. Hope you like it. And maybe somebody want to improve on my ideas and build his own digital dashboard.